This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 291, Four Ways to Stop Skipping Workouts by Nehar Fanuni of neharfanuni.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Hey, welcome to another Monday episode of Optimal Health Daily, where I simply read to you from the best health and fitness blogs for free. I cover fitness, nutrition, stress management, weight management, and lots more. This is just like an audiobook, but from a bunch of different authors. And on Fridays, I answer your questions right here on the show. That's one of my favorite parts of this podcast, so keep sending in those questions. Now, this past weekend was actually kind of a special weekend for the old podcast family. I had the pleasure of meeting fellow podcasters, Lee and his wife, Jocelyn, in person. What's really special about this is I had never met Lee and his wife, Jocelyn, in person. We, of course, know each other well from our podcasts, but this was actually the first time where we all were in a room together and we had a blast. I'm so glad they got to visit. All right, now let's get right to it. Let's hear from Ms. Fanuni as we start optimizing your life. Four Ways to Stop Skipping Workouts by Nagar Fanuni of nagarfanuni.com. Confession, sometimes I skip workouts. I love lifting and getting sweaty just as much as the next lady meathead, but sometimes I just really, really, really don't want to go to the gym. We've all been there. Even those among us who identify as gym junkies and fitness fanatics have had periods when getting to the gym was the absolute last thing we wanted to do. Sometimes that feeling is a message. It could be time to rest, recover, or reduce the intensity with which we exercise. But other times, it's just resistance. And as Stephen Pressfield says in his poignant and must-read book, The War of Art, quote, resistance will tell you anything to keep you from doing your work, end quote. In this case, your, quote, work is your fitness. It's the very real and essential act of self-care that is movement. Yes, you heard that right. Exercise is fundamentally a form of self-care, and the very act of moving is to honor your body's need to do so. If we care for our bodies, we find that all obstacles in life become more surmountable. Alas, sometimes the resistance that stands between us and our fitness is thick and relentless. I don't subscribe to the no excuses adage that so many fitness trainers throw out. I think there are lots of excuses, and many of them are extremely valid. But sometimes it's not a matter of excuses at all, just a matter of fighting resistance, making things more realistic, and removing obstacles that stand in the way of us and our workouts. Thankfully, resistance can be overcome. What follows are four simple strategies to assist you in doing so. Overcoming fitness resistance, aka how to get your booty to the gym. Accountability. The oldest tool in the anti-resistance toolbox is also one of the most effective. Ask other people to hold you accountable. This can be done by signing up for a class that you're expected to attend, having a gym buddy, or simply asking a loved one to hold you to your intentions. With the wonders of modern technology, we can even look to devices and online communities for accountability. Exercise trackers such as Fitbits and online communities such as Facebook groups are effective and alternative methods of increasing accountability. The base rationale is this. If you say you're going to do something and other people are counting on you to do it, you're more likely to actually do it. The two times I went to the gym last week were both enforced by my husband after asking him to make me go no matter how much I resisted. It's not necessarily a long-term strategy, but it works in a pinch and is a fantastic way to get started. The path of least resistance. If resistance is the issue, it makes sense to take the path that involves as little of it as possible. What I mean is this. When resistance is bubbling up from within you, do your best to limit external resistance. For example, if evening exercise is the aim, keep your gym bag in the car so that instead of going home after work, you go straight to the gym. Another example, if early morning exercise is the aim, sleep in your gym clothes or lay them out the night before. Sleeping in them might feel icky for some, but I recently wore the same sweatpants eight days in a row, so what do I know? Also, try to find a gym that's close enough to your home or place of work that getting there isn't inconvenient. And consider keeping some fitness equipment at home, such as kettlebells, ropes, or bands. If you can create a situation that involves fewer external obstacles, you'll increase your likelihood of overcoming resistance. Minimum effective dose. Part of what keeps so many of us from committing to a consistent fitness routine is the misunderstanding of what that has to entail. 
If, like me, you were bred to believe that workouts need to be long and comprehensive in order to be effective, allow me to disprove that myth. While it's nice to be able to commit to an hour-long plus training session when time allows, this isn't always possible. Further, we fall into the trap of thinking that if we can't do said training session, we might as well not do it at all. Erroneous. Erroneous on all counts. Minimum effective dose is the smallest or shortest amount of something you can do while still eliciting a positive response. So rather than commit to hour-long workouts, consider 30 minutes or even less. If all you've got is 10 minutes, use those 10 minutes to move because yes, it counts. And here's why. When it comes to fitness and just about any other positive habit, consistency is more important than perfection. If perfection is the goal, we'll rarely, if ever, reach it. By setting ourselves up to only go to the gym if we have plenty of time, we're setting ourselves up for failure. What happens when we're slammed with a project or up all night with an infant or sick kiddo or traveling and press for time? If we set out to move consistently, regardless of the length of the workouts, we'll be more likely to create a sustainable long-term habit. Along the same vein, consider that not every workout needs to be quote-unquote hardcore. A brisk walk or just 15 minutes of yoga can be highly effective when consistency is the intention because the more consistently you move, the more movement becomes your norm. Reframe your reasons. As a recovering dieter and obsessive exerciser, I understand the struggle to conform to societal pressures and strive for an ideal body. Even after healing my body image issues, I found myself over-identifying with my athleticism and putting a great deal of pressure on myself to quote-unquote perform. Unless we're actually competing, and even then, to some extent, this pressure is unnecessary. When we stress and obsess over the reasons behind our pursuit of fitness, it can often be difficult to step into a space of ease and adaptability. We wind up making things feel very serious, and the process can bump up against a mountain of resistance. But if we learn to move for the sake of movement, to view fitness as a means of self-care and a method of honoring our bodies, we can begin to overcome this resistance. Take the shoulds and the musts and the seriousness out of fitness And ask yourself instead, what do I actually enjoy? What makes me feel alive? How can I move in a way that honors my energy levels, my preferences, and my limitations? Resistance is a very real struggle. It manifests within us, paralyzing and debilitating us, and is further exacerbated by many of life's external obligations and commitments. But with the right tools and a willingness to adapt, resistance can be overcome. Fitness, as it turns out, doesn't have to be so serious. It can be something that adds a tremendous amount of value and meaning to our lives if we can learn to overcome the resistance that stands between us and our body's inherent desire to move. You just listened to the post titled Four Ways to Stop Skipping Workouts by Nagar Fanuni of nagharfanuni.com. I love that Ms. Fanuni mentioned exercise as self-care. Not surprisingly, one of the most common excuses I hear from folks when they tell me they don't exercise, is I don't have enough time. So I change the subject. I ask them, how long does it take them to get ready in the morning, to shower, brush their teeth, fix their hair, do their makeup, all of that stuff? They usually say, oh, about an hour, maybe longer in some cases. And I say, so that is self-care, right? You would agree that that's self-care? They'd say, yeah, of course. And I'd say, so what is exercise? And then they pause, and you could see their brains start to think it over. You could see it in their eyes. They start to light up and they go, oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, exercise is self-care too. And it's probably one of the best self-care methods we have. This is because exercise positively affects pretty much every cell in the body. It is one of the most powerful forms of self-care available to us. And I've said this before. I'm one of those who has had the mindset where if I can't go for an hour to the gym today, I'm not gonna go at all. What's the point? It's not gonna do me any good. I've had to get over that. So I'm with you if you're like that. I get it. But no joke, just the other day, I was feeling that. I was feeling a little bit tired, but I realized it was probably more laziness than exhaustion. So I actually got up and did a seven minute, it was actually seven minutes and 48 seconds, I timed myself, workout, and I felt so good that I did it. I felt great the rest of the day. Sometimes, again, it's just getting up and doing it. I had to force myself to put on my gym clothes and my sneakers, but once they were on, I was committed. 
So my tip to you to add to what Ms. Vanuni said is if you want to work out, if you're just feeling lazy, just do one thing. Put on your sneakers, put on your tennis shoes and see what happens. That initial step is sometimes enough, oh, pun intended, is enough to get you going. That's what it took for me and I did it and I felt great. And lastly, like Ms. Fununi said, it is really all about consistency. That's what I've said so many times. You want more muscles, you want to look a certain way. Yes, of course, those are nice side effects, but the way to get there is through consistency. Even if you do a little bit each day, it adds up, it truly does. So what are you waiting for? Do something right now. 20 push-ups, 10 sit-ups, 10 air squats, whatever, just do it. Now before I go, don't forget, we have four other podcasts where we narrate blogs for you, covering a bunch of different topics. And like I said at the top of the show, I met my fellow podcasters for the first time. So definitely show them some support too. To subscribe to those, just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this show. Thank you in advance so much for doing that. Thank you for being here every day. I hope you have a great rest of your Monday and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.